Davis bounced it off his head, and I don't think that was an accident. You've got a tie atop the LCAA standings. Count that baby in a foul. The first time they've been there in 61 years. Morenci is going to the President Center. And I think this is pretty much over. Westfield Royals, district champions. This is the Sports Report. I'm Hoover Bersiaga. I'm a junior at Tecumseh High School. And today, I'm joined by Jeff Bowman, Sports Director at WABJ Sports Radio 1490. Hi, Jeff. Good to have you here today. Thanks, Uwe. I'm glad to be here to try to help out with the Sports Report again. In this edition, we'll be talking about the past winter sports season here in Lunaway County. We'll be sitting down with the head coach of the newly crowned state champion, Lunaway Christian Cougars, Jamie Salenbein. We'll then chat with the first team all-county basketball player, Marenzi's own Maddie Schmidt. And then we cannot talk about winter sports without mentioning the Hudson Tigers wrestling team. I'll sit down with their head coach, Scott Mary, to get his thoughts on the Tigers winning their seventh state championship. But first, let's talk about the state champions, the LCS Cougars. They've won the first title in Lunaway County since 1974. I mean, that's gotta be some amazing stuff there. Yeah, they had a great year once again, only losing one time, and that was to a Class A team in Monroe, um, you know, and that was only a one-point game. So they're, they're just so good from top to bottom, and they're so young. It's going to be an amazing run that uh, we're going to expect for the next four years for these girls. I mean, even in the playoffs, they were winning their games by, you know, 10 or even more points, and their only game that was close was with Mount Pleasant winning by two in overtime, but every other game has been like a complete domination. It's well, and I think that Coach Salenbein and what they were able to do to get their schedule prepared for them, you know, again, they're only lost to a Class A team. They played a lot of bigger schools all year long, so, you know, when it got to playoff time and they got to schools that were a lot more their size, they were able to do pretty well with it just because of the fact that they were such a prepared basketball team from, you know, start to finish for this season. Yeah, and then definitely the fact that they're also a young team, only one senior, and then most of them sophomores and juniors, uh, one freshman, obviously Bree Salenbein. I mean, definitely a young team with a young coach as well, his first year coaching, Coach Salenbein. How does this happen? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, you know, it, it's such a family affair when you look at, at Coach Salenbein. You know, then the two best players on the team are the freshman, Bree Salenbein, who was just named the Class D player of the year, which is pretty rare for As a, a freshman. freshman. Yeah. You know, and then Danny Salenbein. And I think, you know, when you have a Coach Salenbein's coached these girls in some summer and, and coached with the other girls. It is more than just his two daughters. It's a really a family thing. And I think that the cohesiveness and the, this, the unit they had as a team was something special. Well, Jeff, I had a chance to talk with Coach Salenbein. Let's take a listen and hear what he had to say. Coach, how are you doing? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So, how does it feel? to be the first girls basketball team since 1974 to bring a state championship to Lunaway County. It feels really good. I'm still excited and it's been a really fun ride. Yeah, and tell me about that ride a bit. I mean, you obviously had to have some competition, but for the majority of the games, you guys were leading almost by 10 or more points. Yeah, I mean, there was uh, touch and go in some of the games, but um, there was some real stiff competition towards the end, playing Sacred Heart out of Mount Pleasant, Portland St. Patrick, and some tough schools like that. Uh, but overall, just so pleased at the way the girls just uh, stuck with the game plan and, um, you know, carried out and made some made some great progress towards the end, peaking at the right time mm -hmm. and ultimately coming up with some big wins. Yeah. And you actually mentioned it uh, in the semifinals. You were you went into overtime with Mount Pleasant. You guys eventually won 46 to 44. A very close game in the semifinals. What 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 was your thoughts going into that <laughs> going into the overtime? Um, uh, my heart was beating out of my chest, to be honest with you. Um, but at that point, it's just a matter of trusting the team and trusting the girls to do what they've been taught. And there's not a lot as a coach you can do. So I turned it over to them and made some big stops when we needed to and uh, made some big plays towards the end to pull it out. Speaking of the, rec the season overall, you guys were completely dominant the entire way. I mean, 26 and 1, you guys' record. It's, how do you, what do you tell your girls? I mean, 
how are they in practice? What do they do to put in the extra work to make them such a, such a dominant team? Yeah, well, we're really lucky to have some girls that are competitors and they're committed to, to growing and learning and the chemistry was just amazing. So um, it's just a matter of help guide them uh, toward reaching their full potential. And the practice times were really solid. I got some coaches, some assistant coaches that have just poured into them as well. And the overall chemistry just really came together. And uh, their practice habits are really good too. So that helps to, to build a good, strong team. Definitely teach them not only for basketball, but for life in general, you know. Yeah. For sure, for sure. I mean, I, ultimately basketball will be gone someday and we want to have good solid relationships and teach a lot of good life skills. So it was helpful for that too. You guys just won the state title. What's coming in the future? Are we going to see them continually be dominant in their future games or? It's so hard to predict that. I mean, we're obviously going to have a target on our back now. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not a bad thing. And the good thing is that the girls are going to work hard and they're already asking about um, how they can get better. So we want to just keep our nose to the grindstone, keep working, and uh, have a good off season to where they can build skills and uh, ultimately just keep fulfilling their potential as players and ultimately as a team. Well, it definitely seems like Coach Selenbein has a good understanding of what kind of program they are and need to continue to be in order to keep up this dominance. Yeah, again, it's, you know, what, he, he knows what's going on. Mm. And uh, I think he's the right person to be there right now. And, uh, that definitely the LCS program is in good hands. When we come back, we're talking about the TCC champions of 2018, the Morency Lady Bulldogs. I'll sit down with one of their star players, Maddie Schmidt. You're watching the Sports Report only on LSN, your home for Lunaway Sports. All right, this is Adam, take two. Mark? I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> The best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. So, I got my start in officiating when a friend told me I should try it. At first I just did basketball and I got hooked. Before long, I added baseball, softball, football, and volleyball. I really enjoy giving back to the game, working with kids, and working with my local association to recruit and train new officials. I would like to say to anybody that officiating is a great way to help kids and stay connected to the game. We always need new officials. There's help wanted, just listen. Welcome back. We just got done talking about the girls basketball program at LCS. But there was also another team that made some headlines as well, and that was the Bulldogs of Morency. As a team, they were the TCC champions. So Morency, definitely a smaller town, but making some big headlines for themselves. Yeah, and this was a team that definitely wasn't expected to be uh, the TCC champion this year. You know, you look in the history of what Madison has done, um, you know, they kind of were a little down this year, and uh, you know, Morency came right up and, and took the title when they had a chance. Uh, it was a surprising team, but when they got there early and started going, again, they're a team that were very, very capable of scoring. And that was the one thing that they were to do with Maddie Schmitz, who we talked to, uh, along with Dale and Maryland. When you put those two together, you know, pick your poison. Mm -hmm. One of them is going to beat you, and they did quite a bit this year. Yeah, definitely. And talking about Maddie Schmidt, I mean, she scored a thousand points in her career just this season. I mean, past it this season, as well as uh, Dale and Marilat. I mean, how is that even possible when it's only them, them two, and another person from Morency in the history of Morency? Yeah, it, it's a, it's quite a season that they had, especially. I mean, Dayla Maryland with 419 points this season was the first team All-Stater. Um, you know, she went over a thousand as a junior. That's pretty amazing, right there. And she's got a whole nother season left for it. You know, and Maddie Schmidt over a thousand as well. And, you know, those two have been kind of the uh, the building blocks of this program for the last few years, and so they were counted on a lot to score, and they did a good job with it. And you know, to see what they were able to do, they kind of, you know, they, you know, reaped the fruits of their labor this year. And with a record of 17 and five, I mean, that obviously not undefeated, but still someone to look out for and as a contender in this, you know, in this county. Yeah, and they, you know, again had a great year. They just, you know, had to run into, you know, LCS in the, uh, the districts, and that was the reason they didn't go further than what they did. But mm -hmm. you know, they again a, a great year for them, and it was good to see them kind of. They had really. They made it far a few years ago. Then that program really kind of took a 
just the bottom fell out. And the way the last few years they rolled to bring it back up is, is really a nice thing for Marenzi. Do you think if LCS wasn't in there, schedule up in the playoffs, do you think they could make it even farther? Could yeah, I mean, definitely. I think that uh, they probably could have contended for a regional. Um, Portland St. Pat, you know, in the regionals was always a tough team that they would have ran into. You know, last few years they've had to run through Pittsburgh, but, you know, Marenzi though, next year they're going to be up into a Class C, so they're going to have a little bit of a tougher time possibly, but, you know, we'll see with Maryland what she can do as a senior and what her senior leadership can bring to that team. So you said Marenzi was a, going to a Class C. How did they determine what classes they're in and eventually who they play? Well, it's it's all a breakdown on, on enrollment, and every year the MHSAA, uh, you know, takes four divisions and tries to keep it as close as they can with um, those four classes that have the same amount of uh, schools in those four classes. And so they look at the enrollment and have to bump some people up and bump some down. And so this year, uh, you know, last year actually Pittsburgh, you know, they won a Class D state championship a couple years in a row. They went up to C. Actually, I think they're moving back down to D. Um, but Marenzi, just with enrollment and stuff, has uh, bumped themselves up a little bit where this year, their next season, they're going to be a Class C team. And do you think they're ready to play that, you know, that upper level of play? Yeah, I mean, where they play in the TCC, they, you know, a lot of the teams they play are Class C teams too, so it, it's not a huge factor, um, but it just all depends, you know, who has a good year. You know, there's some of the teams, again, you know, with Madison and uh, Brent Deerfield this past year and Sand Creek and Clinton, they're all Class C teams, so they're used to playing them. Mm -hmm. It just makes it maybe a little bit tougher when he gets down to the state tournaments. Well, Jeff, I talked to one of their star players, Matty Schmidt. Let's take a listen. So in the regular season, you had 368 points for the season, 75% of which came from inside the arc. How do you do that? Um, I mean, it's always been my game to drive, so I mean, I guess if you just have quick feet and you're fast, then that's how it works. You are one of three people in Marenzi girls basketball history to score over a thousand points in your career. How does that make you feel to be such a part of an elite group? Um, it's an honor and it was a really overwhelming night, but I'm glad it's over and that I got to accomplish <laughs> one of my biggest goals. When you were a freshman, you moved actually to Marenzi. Um, and from that point, you've only competed in varsity level sports. What has you know, set you apart to be able to compete at these upper level sports, even as a freshman? Um, I think coming to Marenzi, I was already pretty advanced because the school I went to, you know, they had a really tough league. So I was always pushed to like be at the top. So I think just coming in, like I was already, I already had more like skill level because I was pushed at a younger age. Not only do you play basketball, but you also play uh, volleyball, softball, competitive, you're in competitive cheer, and you're also in the National Honor Society. How do you manage all of this at um, the same time? Well, I've been managing all of this my whole life, so it's kind of natural to me. I don't even really, I get this question a lot and I don't even really think about like how I do it because it's just always been my life, so it's just a natural thing to me. And at the same time, also creating a legacy for yourself at Marenzi High School. I mean, you're gonna go down in history in Marenzi. Isn't that, I mean, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's so. a good feeling. So what, what does the future hold for you? I mean, in sports, in basketball? Um, I'm planning on going to Grand Valley for uh, college, and my first year, like, I've been so overwhelmed with sports, I think I'm going to take a break my first year, but it's not out of the possibility that I'm going to play sports. All right, we're headed to break, but don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll head to the mats as we take a look at the Hudson Tigers and their unstoppable wrestling team. You're watching The Sports Report, only on LS at your home for Lunaway Sports. As the voice of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic athletes can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stand should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should be positive role models and supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports while keeping a high level of respect between all those involved in the games. Enjoy, enjoy the game! Sports give so many opportunities to kids. It gives them an opportunity to see where they fit within a team, persevere, 
understanding how to work with different personalities. Those are the lessons that will make you a successful adult. As a mom, you have to have an understanding of what concussions are. Concussions are things that are treatable. If we take care of athletes, they will be able to develop and have a long, happy, healthy life. Welcome back. We just got done talking about the basketball culture here in Lenawee County. But we are going to switch from the hardwood to the mats, which means it's time to talk about the dominant Hudson Tigers. Wow, Hudson Tigers, I mean, they had a real great season. They're unbelievable. Once again, they are, you know, a class of, you know, Division Four wrestling in the state of Michigan. What Coach Scooter Mary can do is such a great job he's done with them. And, you know, we talked earlier about what Lenaway Christian and their schedule has done to prepare them. That's one thing Coach Mary does with his schedule. They go up and take on uh, Detroit Catholic Central a couple times throughout the year, who's always you know, one of the best teams in Division I. Um, in their conference, they have Dundee that they wrestle hard with all the time, and they won Division Three. So these wrestlers are so well prepared when it comes to the state tournament time that, you know, that's why you get seven state titles. But because when you walk on the mat for these big events, they're not worried about it. They've already been in big matches throughout the course of the year. Yeah, that pressure is not as much because they've already been facing things like 10 times greater than that almost. And when you're as good as you are, every day in practice, you're wrestling guys that are probably better than your opponent that you're gonna wrestle in the actual meet. So they're so prepared in the wrestling room at practice every day, they're taking on, again, guys that are better than what they're gonna wrestle in a regular match. And it definitely shows. I mean, they have seven state titles in the past nine years. That's, uh, wow. Yeah, and you know, they're incredible. When they were, you know, even the titles they didn't win, they were finishing runner up. And so they just have been on a roll so many times that they've been to the state finals. And uh, it's just fun to see how Coach Mary, what he's been able to do to build that program. And, and you know, we always, we talk a lot about programs when you, when you talk about mm -hmm. sports and teams and Hudson is, that's the epitome when you talk about a wrestling program from start, you know, from top to bottom, that's what they do. Scott Mary came by our studios to have a chat. So let's take a look. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. So what is it like having this state, state winning team? You guys have won seven of your past 10 years going. Um, you know, the, the wrestling program at Hudson, it was established years before I took over. I, a guy named Pat Malarney started it back in the later 60s, and I wrestled for Pat in the early 70s. Pat's now retired, of course, and has moved on to retirement, but he kind of set the stage, the stage of toughness, and you know, he's an old farm boy. He grew up across the road from my dad, and he used to pick me up for practices when I was eight years old, and we'd go work out, and you know, the guy instilled in me some toughness and you know, I bailed hay for the summer jobs and stuff like that. So to coach a team at Hudson, honestly, all you really have to do is to, to continue that tough attitude and you bring that tough attitude, that's what the community members want. Mm. You know, they're tough. And it's kind of, I'll be honest, it's one of those last hanging in there, tough attitude, type of districts allowed yeah. in, in this world anymore. You know, they're homegrown kids that have been there for generations upon generations. So it's not as hard as what people think, you know. I mean, I'm just doing what Pat started and, you know, the, the kids expect it from mm -hmm. me and they expect me to be tough on them. They, If I wasn't tough on them, they would probably call me out. Their parents would call me out. So. To me, I'm, I'm blessed that I just get to be, I'm in the right place getting to do what I like to do. Yeah. And what is it like, you said, you know, you were wrestling there with, you know, before you're in the program you are now. What is it like trying to bring that old type of style and that old type of, you know, toughness into this new century, into this new teams that you're continually to show, you know, make championships? Honestly, the, 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 the most difficult part of that is reminding them why they're different and why they're special and to embrace that not to make them feel pressured kids don't perform well under pressure but to applaud that toughness and to say listen you know these 
these extra cows that we do, these extra practice that we do is why Hudson is sometimes a little bit different in wrestling than in anything else, you know. Uh, and the old guy, Pat Malarney, I mean, he goes to every one of my state title meets. He still is there watching. So they get to meet him, they, they see him, um, they understand. Mm. It's, um, the most difficult part is to remind them. You know, the kids maybe over at that other side or the other school aren't doing this or that, and I know that seems inviting, and I know that seems fun, or even more fun, but the fun comes in the rewards of winning. The fun comes in being different. The, the toughness of this team, of your team, you know, how is that? Because I know you guys definitely, when you practice, you practice at a higher level and what you, when you compete. So how is that, you know, being able to practice with schools and even in your own, in your own, you know, school, having these grade A students that are like top notch when it comes to their wrestling? Well, our practices, you mentioned it are sometimes tougher than our competitions and um, I I haven't changed much from day one 28 years ago than I have now as far as technique goes but one thing I have done is I've changed as far as how I manage the time and practice and how I manage um, how much work I ask out of each and every one of them every kid is different of course what does the future hold for your program in general you know, that's, that's probably the biggest question going on, going on with me and my family. They, um, I'm in my 28th season. Uh, I think anyone would say that would be long enough of a tenure to, <laughs> to validate retirement, but mm -hmm. I'm not at that point. My body's not at that point. My mind's not at that point. Um, financially, uh, my wife and I, we don't feel it's time for me to be even thinking about retirement. She's not thinking about retirement. so. I, I know I have probably at least five to ten more years of coaching, so what I'm doing right now and what the program's looking at is the successor. You know, we're looking at the, the three or four assistants that are beside me right now, and um, a lot of that is going to come to how much they want. I mean, mm -hmm. if they don't want it, I definitely don't want them being my successor. Um, but I see the program for the next five or ten years being real steady. but. 20 years from now, that's still kind of a question mark. You know, we'll see. I, I, I don't want it to go backwards by any means. I would like it to stay where kids can find success at Hudson through wrestling, and I want people to be confident in the person that takes over for me. So Jeff, I want some words of wisdom from you about the basketball culture here in this community. Final words of wisdom. Well, it's going to be tough. I mean, right now you look at what this culture of basketball boy side is like what the future it's it's tough I mean we don't have the Austin Davises uh, anymore and so we, we kind of struggled this year I know that uh, there wasn't the real outstanding boys team I mean LCS went far um, but they were a, a, a true team they didn't have a real standouts really on that other than Trey Holinsky um, you know but again just looking at this the future of boys basketball in Lenawee County. Uh, hopefully some teams will step up because it's been down um, and we want to see it get on the uprise. And there are, were, are some few young guys in this uh, in, in the county that can hopefully do some things, but it's, it's going to be a tough one. Definitely still waiting for that one team to kind of spark things up again. Yeah, I mean, you know, Blissfield young with, uh, you know, Ganon, Wyman, a couple of young guys on there. Um, you know, possibly they can do some things. They, they took a lot of lumps this year, mm -hmm. but really grew from it. In the end of the year, you could see they were playing a lot better and had more confidence. You know, other than them, we'll see if there's really a team out there that wants to take that next step. So on the other side of the basketball, we got the girls' basketball teams. I mean, what do you see for them in the future? Well, again, I mean, I think you, you start with LCS mm -hmm. and then maybe see who else is out there. You know, again, it's, it's, it's LCS for sure. And the other teams, possibly, I mean, you know, Onset loses quite a bit. Um, you know, other than that, there's really not a lot out there. Um, so we'll see if, if one of those teams can kind of sneak up on some people next year. Well, that'll do it for this edition of the Sports Report. I'd like to thank all of our guests for sharing their take on their awesome seasons. And Jeff as well. It's great to see you on this side of the camera for a change. Yeah, it's a little different, but it's, uh, it's fun to be here. I definitely have more of a face for radio, but I'd have fun doing it. Want to see if we're coming to your town? 
Get connected to Lunaway Sports on LISD TV's Facebook page and Twitter page for our broadcast schedule. Also, check us out on YouTube and subscribe to LISD TV's channel for all of our full game broadcast. And Lunaway, as always, make sure to turn your AM dial to WABJ 1490 for all of your news, talk, and sports. This has been a presentation of LSN, your home for Lunaway Sports. Tie atop the LCAA standings. Count that baby in a foul. The first time they've been there in 61 years. Morenci is going to the President Center. And I think this is pretty much over. Westfield Royals, district champions.